in the end, this is my story, that it's a bit like this slow fading out, of course, without noticing that I'm fading out. In that time, I had a completely different story about myself, because as long as there is someone, it feels like I'm on a path. And my story at that time was that things get lighter and life is more easy and I don't care that much anymore. Still thinking that I'm moving into a future which is still better, which is a little bit closer and stuff. And so the collapse, the apparent collapse, was actually a non-event. I wasn't waiting for it. It was not a big thing. It wasn't even an it. There was no event actually at all. There was just suddenly, so to speak, no one there anymore. But I can't explain that. I would, I would turn the picture a little bit around because it's not really that the relaxation is a side effect. It's more like that being someone has a lot of side effects like being tense, like living in stories, like wanting to find something else. And in a way, one could say what happens is that those side effects stop. It's not really that an additional state of relaxation comes in. I mean, on the one hand, one could say it's clever. On the other hand, seen from the person, it's, it's the only possibility because seeing the only possibility for the person, so to speak, is to be the person. And of course, everything it or it has to approach everything from a personal standpoint. And so what it's looking for is an answer. What it's looking for is the truth, so to speak. What it's looking for is this one thing which answers everything and this message can seem like that so the person just somehow suddenly ah yes maybe this is it and that's what i mean it's not necessarily clever it's just how it approaches everything and now it approaches this message non-message like that. There was someone who was somehow living in stories and stuff like that. But I think the most intense things like that I had in my spiritual phase. Because this was already where I thought this is the answer, this is it, this will give me everything. I will become a totally happy person. And when that crumbled, so to speak, I couldn't really redo it with this message again. It was, it was almost ridiculous to have those same thoughts again. Because before that, there already was so much admiration and stories around having found and being on the right path. So it didn't really happen with this message again at least not so total of course as i said as long as there was someone there were stories about me and about life and stuff like that i mean my impression is it's just really loaded with meaning you know it's always about for someone about absolute love and absolute freedom and total healing and it's all those ideas which seen from the person can be loaded with so much importance and meaning it's somehow it's a bit like easy to understand that a new car doesn't make you happy so to speak or being rich isn't everything what life is about but if you have these fluid ideas where you can actually project all kinds of things into, like absolute bliss, unconditional freedom for someone.
then it that can become really heavy and intense for the person you know in the end also with money for example you know if you have 100 euros or dollars or if you have 100 millions but with this emotional spiritual thing it's just one moment you feel blissful and five minutes later something bad happens and you feel totally bad and disconnected with those meaningful ideas of i'll be enlightened soon or i will i will never get it that's a roller coaster that's just what it is for for this illusion to be someone it is threatening energetically it's not the words really i mean of course some people are scared by the concept of death or stuff like that but in a way immediately inherently so to speak pointed to one's absence or to one's not being real which is kind of seen from the person it's like pointing to death and it can it just can feel like that I, my assumption is the person would be threatened anyway because the threat is rather energetic than because of the concepts that we are playing with. Yeah, in the end it's quite rare, so to speak, but, <laughs> but not as rare as the person might think. One que in the end it's just one question. In, disguised in many questions so to speak and the question is how can i become one or the question is what can i do what's the right way for me to be in order to become one shall i do this shall i do that shall i be like that shall i be like that what to do please help me what can i do i think that's the one question basically dilemma that it's exactly to this question there is no answer i can't answer the this question or there is no answer to this question one could say and that's the person's dilemma so to speak it it experiences itself as i'm here and it's a bit like shouting into space well why am i here what shall i do and there's just nothing coming back ever of course there is frustration but there's also freedom in it because what's also implied energetically is that there is no answer needed so to speak but of course it's frustrating for the seeker within the <clears throat> this apparent world of the seeker this is frustrating but there's also some relief in it. It's not another concept or idea. And it relieves from, from the possibility to be right or wrong. I actually think because it's not a personal message, it's not, this message doesn't try to confront people. It's, it doesn't create an opposite standpoint. It's not in opposition to something really. So, of course, for some people it is intense and there are strong reactions and maybe some people get a bit angry inside or something. But I think it's quite obvious that it's not trying to, that it's not in war. This message is not in war with anything. Yeah, it's not fighting against something. Like, for example, in a teaching where you fight unhappiness or you fight against illusion or stuff like that <laughs> it doesn't do that <laughs> when you are no one you suddenly know it all as if you have as if you now know all the sentences and how it is and stuff like that but in the end it's it's the other way around when the person dies one doesn't know anything anymore so it's blank and when i started the talks it was not that i had something to say usually i i couldn't have more than two sentences in my head i couldn't get it together and 
it's the same today. It's not that now I know what I want to say. It's still blank, but I'm somehow more used to that. Well, that the freedom in the end is that there is no such thing. That's the freedom, that everything already is free to be as it is. But that's not a state that can be described. In the end, it's exactly that what is the freedom, that it's not a state that I'm in and that it's not in a certain way, that freedom is not in a certain way opposed to other ways. ways. I think it's exact, exactly that's the freedom, which, as I said, it's not even the freedom. Everything is just naturally free to be what it is, basically. There isn't anything saying no to anything, neither a person nor a God. There is no one taking care. That's the freedom. That's the absolute freedom, so to speak. And it's already the case. It's not a state that one day will be achieved or that will happen one day. It's already absolutely free. Exactly. In that sense, one could also turn it around and say everything is absolutely bound to be what it is. There is no... It's free to be what it is, but there's also no other possibility or no choice. There's also no one choosing. So in a way, it's also totally bound to be what it is. It's both. But for no one, that's, uh, th that's what this message is saying, that there isn't anyone imprisoned into what happens. And there's always also no one who will be free from what happens. It will be, uh, well, seen from the person, it will be processed as a concept anyway. Absolutely. Even if I don't say anything, the person will go on living with concepts about the world and how it is and what the truth is and and about me it would say i don't know there's this sentence around silence is the highest teaching so they would even turn the silence into it and stuff like that for the first part what you said in the first part is it difficult to come through no it's never difficult because that's not the intention or the attempt I don't even attempt to have an if effect. There is no intention in, in creating an, an effect over there or in the listener. I'm just saying what I say, regardless, so to speak, or there are just the words that come out. It's not even that I say them. There's just what happens. So there's just what comes out, regardless of anyone hearing it, not hearing it, it having an effect, it not having an effect of people weaving more stories and beliefs out of it. It's, there's no expectation at all about what should happen, what's supposed to happen. No, I, last one said, and as I said, it's inevitable anyway. So the person will make up another concept. It already has concepts. It's not really that it's implying uh, that it's adding more stuff. No, the person will just replace an old concept with a new one, but the person would <laughs> would do that anywhere, no matter what it, <laughs> what it would be doing. <laughs>